Hello, Internet, and uh, my short film was a bit of a disaster. You know, the more time I put myself between my college experience and, um, like, my professional experience and, and um, just the discrepancies between those two, the harder it is for me to have positive things to say about the experience of the film school that I went to. Um, it wasn't, you know, like the best, um, but... Here's the thing, right? I, while I'm working on a project, even if the project is terrible or if the people aren't great to work with or whatever, I never want to badmouth those people, right? I don't want to make it look like we're dysfunctional. I will always do my best to make everybody I'm working with appear as amazing as possible. But, you know, it's important to also bring up the failings with certain things that happen or you know, work ethic and stuff like that. And there were a lot of discussions that were had over the course of this production. And, um, you know, there's some things I learned. So maybe we can take some stuff away from that. One of the great things about working on a small crew is basically that everybody can have creative input. You kind of work as a family unit, or at least that's what it would optimally be. Um, the guy who did Red Rocket worked with a pretty small team. I'm drawing a blank on his name right now, but, um, I really like his films, and I can't remember his name. He did Tangerine as well. That was shot on an iPhone. Anyway, the point is, is that everybody's allowed to have creative input. But I would also say that you definitely need a person there who will kind of ring everybody in. The, no, I'm the creative lead. What I say is the definitive what goes kind of feel. I understand that everybody is involved with that process and, you know, you're not an auteur, especially if you're first starting out. But it definitely helps to have somebody rein into production and to, you know, kind of have that when you start working on the project so you don't get later down the line and you find out that, you know, everything's terrible and it's not working. Anyway, if you're wondering why I'm sitting in darkness right now, it's because I didn't want to set up any lights and I have a big lamp above me to light my face. So, um, you know, the weirdest thing, uh, after I told people that I am a film student and I do film stuff and I incorporate that into my work, uh, people get really annoyed over the production quality of my YouTube videos. And that's annoying as fuck, especially consider that Critical has been doing the same thing for like a decade. Nobody's ever complained. <laughs> The next thing I learned about working on a group is that if somebody isn't pulling their weight, calling them out for not working on the project or putting in the same amount of effort is not you being an asshole. It's you being professional. It's important to be professional on these things. This isn't a game. Even if it's school, you get a grade for this. That's your payment for working on it. So you should treat it as if you were getting paid money. This stuff matters. It's important. Other people have stuff to do. Their time is important and valuable. Don't waste other people's time. If you are somebody that's slacking off on a project, you should be able to recognize that and start working. Or if you recognize that one of your team members is like that, then you should call them out and you shouldn't wait. I waited a lot because pre-production was lagging quite a bit. It was lagging so much that I was a little worried that we wouldn't finish the project. And um, I basically made a prediction in February that we would fall behind and that we wouldn't make the deadline. We did not make the deadline. Basically, if you're a film student or you work on like games or something, treat that $5 production the same way you treat the $100 production, the $1,000 production, and the $10,000. Go into everything with a level of professionalism. Be friendly, but understand that you're here to work. Those things are important and they matter a lot. And that work ethic is really gonna determine who ends up being on set or working on the next hit game. And I should clarify that before this, I was in game so, you know, I've worked on games as well, but um, this is the first time I've worked on a film because of COVID and a couple of other things. So I was a DP for this film and I'll show you some of the shots I did and anything you see that is in the clips that I show from the film are stuff that I also color graded as well. Um, they did do a grade and a pass through on my footage in the edit and um, it is it is not what I would have done and I I gave them that ability to just try it out. And um, I think, I, I'm working with a Fuji XS10 on this project, 18 to 55 kit lens. Um, I just like how Fuji makes people's skin tones look. I think it makes people look pretty. It is a great way to make people look good. Yeah, is it not the most tack sharp? Yeah, absolutely, but I don't think you need the most hack sharp, you know, image processing or whatever to create a good image. These are things that help create that kind of look that I'm going for, and I think it does it quite well. Anyway, yeah, so I'm going to talk about some of my favorite shots, the ones that I worked on uh, or, or that I felt were pretty good and did something interesting or just looked pretty. Um, so yeah, 90% of the film took place here in this room. Uh, 
it was kind of a struggle because we came pretty unprepared from pre-production. So blocking or anything else was just turned on basically on the fly. We basically came up with that as it was coming through. Um, in case you're curious, blocking is basically where people are standing where in each scene and how they move throughout the scene. Some people are very intricate with their blocking, some aren't. Uh, think about, you know, three actors sitting in a chair and then you just set up like triangle co coverage. So that's like a wide shot and then a shot reverse shot or something to just cover the whole scene. But most of this was one actress. It was in one room and we came with two lights and just kept it really simple. This room was pretty small, so navigating around it was quite hard. The team was about five people, so whenever shots became more complicated, like the one I've shown you, um, it meant that everybody had to leave the room in order for the camera not to pick up on you because you wouldn't be able to stand in the corner. Uh, basically in this shot where I'm walking with the actress towards the door, my ass is basically all the way up against a window in the corner of the room. You can see it on the shot going back in the other direction here. I was kind of nestled in by that plant right there and I basically used that to follow and I'm using a gimbal to try and keep it steady and do all of that and do the movements. I set the gimbal on fast because I knew the scene was going to be moving quite fast and going through it and I think at the end of the scene I lose focus but for the main majority of the shot and what we needed for the coverage, yeah, I got the shot. And I'm shooting with autofocus here. The reason I didn't do manual focus is because I'm also operating the gimbal at the same time and it's kind of hard. I have custom AF settings on my cameras so that way I can make sure that the thing is not going to lose focus right away and that I have a few seconds of leeway and that when it does pull focus from autofocus it doesn't look fucking ugly. Most of these shots are basically me shooting for coverage, which means a lot of them aren't interesting or we're just trying to get enough shots so that way it can cover up narration that's happening in the scene. So a lot of it was just get pretty insert shots of different objects based on whatever the actress is talking about, um, which definitely makes it hard. And I did come with a shot list and different plans, um, but you know, inspiration would strike and I kind of just had to go with whatever people were feeling at the moment, um, which is fine. And also not how I would ever do it, but you know, I tried to take a really hands-off approach on this cause I didn't want to be in charge. Um, the, the, the school kind of uh, has said that they don't like people like that. Uh, I talked about it on like a Patreon thing, but basically the gist of it is is that they had a lot of opinions over who should be in charge, uh, not based off of whether or not that person wanted to be in charge or not, but based off of, um, I mean, for lack of a better word, like a diversity quota. Uh, so for this... A, the director, she didn't really want to direct. She didn't really want to take a lead position. And um, she was told by a man or a man told us that she should be in charge because she is a woman. Not that she wanted to be in charge anyway. And if she had wanted that, that would have been fine, but she didn't. It's like a weird uh, double standard of like being like so progressive. It just doubles back on itself. But anyway, that's like getting off topic. Um, it was very, I fucking hated it there, guys. It made me miserable all the time. I've never felt worse about myself. I've never been so creatively empty than I have been the past three years there. Um, anyway, back to the film. So creative plans basically had to be determined on the fly, which was fine, and sometimes other complications would come up. For example, I didn't get to see the sets before I got there the day of, um, I would have liked more pictures or for sets not to have changed, but by the time we got to production, some of the locations had changed and the blocking that I did have or any set that I did come up with uh, needed to be changed. So for example, in this scene, we should have had a shot reverse shot and a wide, just typical triangle coverage. So that's, you know, one shot on the guy, one shot on the girl, and then one shot on the wide showing where they are. Well, unfortunately, the other camera died and um, we were running out of time. Uh, we had gotten this location really short notice uh, so I basically did the, uh, like, I, I don't know, I called it like a, like a Edgar Wright, you know, I just whipped back and forth because the two characters in the scene are arguing. So I basically studied when they were where and then did that. Um, there's also just not much with this that I can talk about, but it's what I spent about three, four, six weeks working on. Um, so yeah, so this took up a lot of time. Uh, it took up pretty much all of my creative energy. Uh, it took away from the channel quite a lot. And, um, you know, the final product came out and, um, it came out all right. 
Uh, like, I, I, again, I don't want to bad mouth. Work ethic is something you can learn, and I'd like to think I have great work ethic. I try to work with people, uh, meet them at their level, be as accommodating as possible. But even I have my limits. Uh, I'm really fine with working with people who like to party. Fine with me. But, like, if you prefer to party instead of work, okay. But, you know, maybe this isn't the thing for you because film requires a lot of time and dedication. Uh, it doesn't help that the school really didn't teach a lot of people how to pick something beautiful, how to pick something provocative. You know, as a DP, what you film should be the visual component to help elevate the emotions that are in a script and like, you know, elevate the performances of the actors, right? You're serving that purpose first and you want to convey that as best you can while also making something beautiful or engaging, you know, but if you're never taught that and then you have your first go around, it's going to be rough. Uh, so there's that. Anyway, guys, I hope some of these shots looked interesting. I also do other stuff aside from this uh, in film. And, uh, you know, I have lots of pretty shots from other things I've worked with. I've done stuff with clients. I've worked with farms. I've worked with non-for-profits. I've worked with, you know, a stylist. I've worked with tons of different people. I've done music videos. Uh, I've done all that. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of YouTube cinematographers that say they take a lot of clients or they do a lot of work and I don't really know if they do. Uh, some of them can afford not to. They can do like a Nike commercial and then coast off of YouTube. Uh, but yeah. So I didn't really get that much practical practice because of the pandemic uh that was pretty much my entire film school education uh most of it was watching movies that i had seen already i even took one class that was entirely on silver screen you know classic horror movies which didn't help at all um so i don't i think i'm going to be applying to grad school because i want the production experience um, I don't know what to do, basically. This There's not a lot of opportunity where I am, and the channel's not in a position where I should just drop all my other plans. So, you know, I like learning. So let's see. I have some big aims, to big goals uh, to get to with uh, film. So hopefully those schools that I look at, one of them takes me. I do have a number one pick, but I'm not going to say who. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how that goes, and then I'll let you guys know what happens. With that said... Take care and be well, Internet.